Yeah, this is Bang Bang Mail. Uh, do you remember the first time? Um, I said things wrong, but I shouldn't have said it. I did say it, and what is that? <laughs> when, I, when I'd done the first real podcast with Marvin Herbert, yeah? yeah? I mean, I think it was a year ago, and uh, we was talking, and I got into about my dog, my dog being shot. Uh, some people come over my back garden and uh, went into my house, and my dog, one of my bull massives, was there. The other bull massive was in the garden, and my bull master was in the, in, in the uh, on top of the stairs, and someone come up and they shot my dog. They shot my dog twice and they killed it. Yeah, um, I got to, I got to, I got to hear bits and pieces from someone else said that uh, it was someone called Mickey Fell, and uh, of course Mickey Fell was having having, having tr- uh, trouble with uh, with Johnny Fury, uh, Johnny Fury, and uh, it escalated. Everything went crazy. Uh, Mickey Phil was uh, really giving it me, um, giving it me big time. I was giving it him big time. Uh, then I get to hear that it wasn't him, nothing to do with him. And then he even gets more bigger and calls me uh, a crackhead, uh, nothing but a wanker. This, that and the other, he's a crackhead. He don't know what he's doing. Um, he's a complete waste of time. Uh, he's, he's 70 years of age, old man. He's this, he's that. He can't hold his hands up. <laughs> Me and Mickey Phil was going right into one. Uh, that was uh, about a year ago, yeah? I think it was a year ago. And then I see Mickey Phil in more videos and he keeps bringing me up through, through the other guy. What's his name? Oh, I forget his name now. Porky Pig, Piggy Pie or whatever his name is. And he keeps bringing me up all the time. Whales this, whales that. Whales can't do this. Whales useless. He's now the fight in his life. He's a complete wanker. And then he went on and on and on. <coughs> then I sort of like digging Mickey Fio out. Telling me he's a little uh, short bodybuilder that throws weights all around the stages and all that. Uh, he's five foot five. And uh, he, done, he done well. He come, he come uh, fifth in uh, five bodybuilders. <laughs> <laughs> and I dug him, dug him, and digging him out myself, yeah. But I bet Mickey Phil really is a nice geezer. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he had trouble with Mickey, with uh, John Fury and all that. That some everyone was getting involved with. But I bet Mickey Phil is quite a nice guy, Zams. You know, and, and and me saying what I said uh, was in a way out of order. It, it was said. It was said because someone told me. Uh, someone. Someone was more like didn't like Mickey Phil, didn't like me. So I thought, yeah, get into at it, dig it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then at the end of the day, in the end of the day, it was like me and Mickey was really going into one. You know what I mean? And uh, just screaming and shouting at each other. Uh, Mickey Phil said, "Where you live? I'm coming around." And it was <laughs> fair play to Mick. Fair play to Mickey Field. I was I'm coming round your shop, I'm going to come round your pie and mash shop or your jelly deal shop or whatever it is, whatever shop you got. And oh, it was funny, mate. It, it was funny um, to go back in them times and uh, to look at them, to look at them, um, to look at them videos that we did and Marvin Herbert and KON TV, Christian, Christian Morgan. Uh, they've, they've got, I mean, Christian Morgan's got fantastic channels with Christian Morgan. You should watch his uh, channels, KON TV. He's a mate of mine. He does fantastic channels, yeah. Uh, but he was, he was, uh, he was really, he was involved in it as well, uh, Christian. You know, let's get it, you know, like, <laughs> giving me, giving me stones, you know what I mean? <laughs> giving me bullets and all that. Yeah, it's fantastic. I loved it. Uh, Mickey Phil, uh, yeah, he's, he's all right, and uh, and it was good. It was good at that time, you know. I loved it, and then and then, uh, to, and then on top of that, you had uh, you had Matty Howard, uh, Matty uh, saying uh, making a podcast saying that uh, Wales uh, uh, he can have a fight, but I would never fight Wales with my fist. I'd uh, use something, and I'd uh, use a tool on him. And, he, and and that's what I sort of then, then I went into one about that as well. You know, uh, you're saying to Matty, yeah, yeah, little this and little that, I'd kill you, I'd get old you, and, and all this, that, and the other. And then Matty's, <laughs> and then people were telling Matty's in a pub saying this about me and that about me, that I'm going mad, I want to kill him. It's like, it, it's, uh, it's funny, yeah. But um, sometimes uh, things are said. Uh, things get out of proportion. 
we all do, we all do it on this, on this media. Uh, everyone says things they don't really mean, and it's 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 mad, you know. Uh, uh, like yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I done something about um, uh, uh, Cottrell, Brian Cottrell, and uh, I got uh, coated off by his wife Emma, uh, which in a way I disrespected uh, Brian, which I shouldn't have done anyway. Um, I disrespected him. I didn't realise that he didn't have a heart attack. Uh, he had he had spinal trouble, uh, tr spinal uh, operations on his spine, and on, on his neck he had all vertebrae on his neck, all sorted out, and metal vertebrae put in, and he'd gone through a lot, you know, Brian. And I, I said he had a heart attack, which I didn't really know. Someone told me, so I straight away I thought that it was an heart attack. It wasn't. I mean, the man was a big, big, powerful man. You know what I mean? And to have all that done, spinal vertebrae and this, that and the other, metal vertebrae put in and this, that and the other. And Emma, uh, she coated me off, yeah? I also don't blame her because I disrespected Brian and she's a good wife, man. And she's she's a fantastic woman to pop me off like she did. I, I really got a lot of respect for that. Um, a lot of people on my on my YouTube, uh, on my comments, coated Brian off, you know, like she's... And they shall go at me about that. Um, but what can I do? That's people's comments. They can say exactly what they like. It's not for me to to uh, disrespect them either. They have their own they have their own way of, of doing things. Yeah, I get enough. I get enough uh, abuse from people. Myself. Uh, there's some guy Hurley. His name is or something. Uh, John Hurley. John Hurley or John something. There's a geezer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's a guy in there now, yeah, John Early or something like that. He's called, I don't know his name. Someone's uh, told me about this guy, and I blocked him on my, on my channel, really, because this guy, uh, I, forget, I find out his name now, John Early, I think his name is something like that, yeah. But uh, he's saying, oh, Wales, this, Wales, that, Wales, of grass, and he's saying, now this guy <laughs> says it's about everybody, yeah. He don't stop spreading rumours. It's really, really bad. Um, but the worst thing about it is the guy is a, a known sex offender. Um, he's a known women beater. He bashes women up. Uh, he's always he's always on YouTube. He's always on channels uh, trying to pick up young girls and all that. Um, I forget his name. I think it's Brian Early or something like that, or, or John Early or something like that. And he's always running people down but um, he, I see him run Marvin, Marvin Herbert one day and uh, Yami. He had a go at them too. And I guess he's a complete, uh, he's an old man, yeah? He's an old man. I mean, he could be 50, but looks 90. You know, he goes to Wandsworth, gets done for uh, things with women and all that. And he goes straight on the numbers. This guy goes straight on the numbers and he's got nothing better to do than run people down and sleep people down. <laughs> and yet, he goes in Wandsworth and this geezer is on the numbers 24-7 and he's a sex offender uh, and there's nothing worse than that. He hasn't even got the bottle. He's got the bottle to shout his mouth about on on uh, on podcasts and all that, on, on media and all that, but he's got no bottle when he gets into prison to come up with the wings. He don't come up with the wings. Come up with the wings, mate. He don't go on the wings, you know. He's, um, he's a bit frightened to go up in the wings. Um, I'll find his name up his name out, and um, I'll put it up, yeah, uh, when I find his name out, I forget, Yami, I think Yami and uh, and uh, Marvin Herbert had aggravated, John Hurley, I think his name John Hurley, and a couple of my pals, a couple of my mates, uh, really good mates, are trying to trace his, uh, trace his uh, computer or, or laptop or whatever, they want to trace it. Uh, some numbers they can do and trace out where he comes from. Uh, the geese is giving my mates grief now. You know what I mean? He's giving me grief. And now, do you know, like, he's one of them people that, oh, mate, what you what you on about, yeah? But uh, go back to Mickey Field. Um, he's, this guy, uh, you know, he's with John, John Fury. <laughs> the way he had a go at John Fury, uh, putting posters up. Remember all that? He was putting all the posters up about John Fury, uh, what he was going to kill John Fury, and this, that, and the other. Uh, you know, but you got to remember <laughs> that John Fury is a real heavy, heavy person. Do you know what I mean? 
the Furies are heavy. I mean, they run Manchester, all them places. They're a heavy family, you know what I mean? Uh, one's a world heavyweight champion. Uh, do you really want the aggro? <laughs> do you really want the aggro of sort of people? Um, no, Mickey Fury, you don't. Um, but John did say that he would beat anybody um, 50 and a little bit older in the ring. And, and Mickey Fury, fair play to him, he did say that, yeah, I'll fight you. And, you know, and then it got to the stage that they had dates, didn't they? Dates and times where they were going to meet on a ring and, and all that. And then Johnny Fury said to uh, Mickey Fury, well, come down. I'm now in London. Uh, I'm at here. I'm at there. I'm the ring or wherever he was. And uh, come down and meet me and we have, it in the, we have it there and then. But nothing ever happened. It was a long, long, I think it was about six months of it, maybe even more. <laughs> and then and then me uh, uh, getting involved on Marvin Herbert's podcast, uh, having a guy at Mickey Fio saying he struck my dogs. And I always said this, you know, Mickey Fio loves his dogs. He loves dogs. He buried his dogs in the back garden. You know, and, you know, uh, he, he was really pissed off at me, you know what I mean? And he really, uh, one of the videos he's done, he's really slagged me off so terrible. <laughs> Saying he's a crackhead, he's this, he's a wanker, he can't hold his hands up, he's an old man, I'd punch him all round the gaff, he's nothing, you know. <laughs> no, was like, hold up, steady, mate. Don't go that far, you know what I mean? Um... But sometimes uh, them things come out of, get out of all proportion. Uh, seriously, yes, seriously. Uh, at one stage, at one stage, I was thinking, oh, I'd like to fight this case myself. But you forget, you forget your age. You know, uh, Mickey Fields, a young man, a very fit man. He trains, he trains every day. Um, he's on the cardio. Now he doesn't do a lot of. I don't think. He, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I look at Mickey Fio, I look at Mickey Fio's arms. Uh, he looks as if he's still in the voids. He looks as if he's still in the voids. Maybe perhaps a little bit. Because some people, uh, it's an addiction. Uh, steroids are an addiction. You've got to take them as such. You know, it's like a, it's like you know, people take coke and no, nothing like coke. Don't start Mickey Fio. Don't start me. You know, people take coke and and, and grass. It get, it's like an addiction. And you've got to take it a lot. So, so steroids is similar. That feeling, your nice feeling, you, you feel very strong, very powerful, and all that. But the only thing it does is your lungs. It sorts your, sorts your lungs out. And it's, uh, I've got to say it though, it does look well. It does look fit. Yeah, fair play to him. Uh, when I see him standing next to his Bentley or his roller um, doing, a, doing a podcast, he looks fit, mate. He looked really good, you know. And I think. Uh, Johnny Fury uh, uh, really uh, should have had a fight with me. I mean, Mickey, I see Mickey Fury in the ring, yeah, um, uh, doing a bit of sparring. I see him do it on the bag and on the pads. Uh, I don't think he stands too much chance with Johnny Fury, being that Johnny Fury is an ex-pro, but Mickey Fury is very game. Uh, what's he, five foot eight, five foot nine, I don't know, and he's very, very game. Uh, he's got a good heart. Um, he used to he used to train. He used to spar with uh, Len. He's had a few. He's had a few sparring matches with Lenny. Lenny broke. <laughs> Lenny, I think Lenny fractured his jaw and broke his nose or something like that. You know, so he he, he understands that, that you can get hurt uh, doing it. Um, he said that he'd done a few rounds with uh, Lenny McLean and he nearly killed him. You know what I mean? So really, I think you should give it up and not do any boxing. It's all right, keep yourself fit, but don't get go and get in the ring with eight ounce gloves. Sixteen ounce gloves, if they can do that. Imagine what eight ounce gloves can do. Cool, right? You know what I mean. So you have got to be a bit careful there. But um, yeah, big respect for him for uh, digging me out like he dug he dug me out. Uh, I love that. You know, um, I love that he went right at the one. You're, if you go through Mickey Theo, uh, you go through his all his his, his uh, videos. He's done his podcast. You'll see it. You'll see it there, uh, having to go at rail or something, or uh, rail or something, uh, you know, I don't know, bang, bang, rail or something like that. It was, uh, as you get a name up, bang, bang, rail, or this or that, you know, like, it's so good. You've got to watch it. The video that he done is fantastic. Honestly, I love it, yeah. Uh, rail is a crackhead. Uh, come on, 
I love it the way he's put it put it together. He's put it together. And anyway, it's I, I like to as I say, I'm already uh, 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 what's his name Brian Brian Cottrell's wife Emma. I mean, you know, she good wife, mate. She's a good wife, yeah. She's st- stuck up with Brian a hundred and ten percent, yeah. She was right behind her husband, you know. Put the video out, and someone more likely phoned her up, told her what's on the video. She's got back to me and and, and had a go at me, yeah. And and I disrespected her. I disrespected her and her husband. I didn't know that he's what he's gone through, um, what he's gone through, and he's still he's still together, really. Uh, she, I said, <laughs> what makes me laugh though? When I said, when I said to M, so I said on 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 my video uh, that Brian Cottrell is half the man he was, and then she backfired. She said, "You see, it's like you, Rail. Uh, you're half the man you was." Well, I know that, you know, but um, I know I know that. And she <laughs> she done me. I was straight in the bathroom. Right, and all I got about three mirrors in my front room. I was straight in the mirrors looking at my oh, I ain't that bad. Do you know what I mean? I ain't that bad for 71. Well, I'm 72 in, two, in a couple of days' time, a couple of weeks' time, rather. So I'm getting old now, you know what I mean? But um, don't know about my age. Uh, age is just a number. I've done X amount of money. I've done 26 years in prison, mate. Uh, 26 years, go back 26 years. That's how old I am. I'm about 50 odd, yeah. It's a less me or even younger, 48, 45, young. And I'll always be that. I'll always keep myself, well, I don't want to get old, mate. I don't want to be sitting about, you know, I've got a double chin coming here. I've got to keep, I keep doing, trying to do neck rolls, yeah, but it's doing my nut. It's giving me a date. <laughs> it's, it's, it's flattening my brain out. And do you know what I mean? When I, was, I mean, I remember when I was do it um, in Chelmsford Prison uh, with Ronnie Bender. And when he bent out all his cushions in his cell, like it was like uh, it's, it's just like a high room was throughout my life. He had all these big cushions in his cell, so I used to go in the cell and uh, do do lots of neck rolls, yeah, and uh, for in his cushions. And my neck, I got my neck up to about twenty two, nearly twenty four inches. And playing rugby as well, being a prop, uh, you need a big neck, you know. And you know, I mean, and, and I remember one time. Uh, I was playing, uh, we played Wasps, yeah? We played their second team, Wasps' second team. And these these props come in, they was massive, mate. I mean, they was big props, yeah? And this prop I had on my side, I went in and nutted him a few times, and they must have got together, the second row, and said, right, we're going to pick him up. <laughs> got underneath. They got underneath me and they picked me up, mate. I swear to God, if I'd have had my big neck, they'd have broke my neck and broke my back. God, what? And they kept pushing and I was up in the air. My feet were off, yeah? And I was bowed up, yeah? And my neck was in a white back. But if it hadn't been for the big neck, bosh, it would have gone, yeah? I, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved my, uh, I loved my rugby. Uh, I loved that in, in, in prison. Because, um, like, you need... You need that, yeah? You need that. And, you know, uh, and big men, big guys come in. And because big guys come in uh, and you're in prison, you forget that you're in prison. Once you've got in that rugby field, the prison thing goes. It's gone. You're there with them and they're there with them and you're having a war, yeah? And uh, it's the same. It's a similar thing as murderable. It's a similar thing. You know, you're in prison. Uh, the idea is getting the ball across that line, kicking the goal, and you know, and and we're like an army, innit? You know what I mean? And, and <laughs> we used to go in there. We used to go in there and have a fight. You know what I mean? Because come on, what chance you got in prison? You've got a chance in prison, but the chance to get away with it is 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 a bit hard, you know, uh, in prison. But when you're out in the field and you're playing rugby, you know, when you get in the bosh, <laughs> get in the scrum, and you can cut as you get down, whoop. You, you know, and then it's like it's off in it. You know what I mean? And they're plotting up to do you, and as soon as you get the border on you, you know, and, and they're giving you group bump bump, and they're giving you right handers here and there. And, and you know, I loved it, man. I used to love it. We used to just get together and say, right, see that over there. We gotta get him. He's the one. He's the one who just gave me a dig. 
he's the one we've got to get him, yeah? And I make a, always make a beeline for him, you know, and in the end, you get him, yeah? And uh, they all steam on him. I'm giving it him, yeah? And, yeah, I love my rugby, man. I loved, I loved that getting that away, getting away from prison, yeah? Getting away from being locked up and being banged up and thinking about the outside world. And when the outside world comes in, you're with it, and so you're with the outside world. And I also love it because you get some of the players, uh, they got, some have got to get vetted. They get vetted when they come in, but a lot, obviously, so sweet, man. And they come in, they come in with tobacco and drinks and bit, no drugs, but tobacco and drinks, yeah? And they put it and leave it somewhere for you. And they're nice guys, because a lot of guys are like us, you know, they're the same as us. Uh, maybe done, maybe maybe they've done a bit of bird. I do get vetted, but it ain't that bad, yeah. Uh, Charles was a good prison for that, and uh, you know we still got they they come in and still leave a couple of bottles here and a couple of bottles there and, and some cigarettes here, some roll ups here, and uh, yeah, it was good, yeah. And I loved it, man. I miss all my pals. I miss all my mates. Uh, that uh, you know you, you miss all that lot. You, you meet some good people in prison, mate. You meet some good people in prison, but you know it's like everything else, you know. Uh, you meet people in prison, but uh, when they get out, uh, a lot of them, they forget you, yeah? Or you forget them. And it's a shame, you know? I have seen, uh, when I got out, I got on the crack bad. Um, I have seen people that, I have seen people out there, uh, you know, they look at you and think, oh, what's up with this geezer? You know what I mean? Look at, the, he used to be a proper geezer, and now he's on crack. <laughs> piping up, you know, like that, you know. But me being on the pipe, um, I wasn't, I didn't lose that much weight really, but I was still very dangerous. And that was the part of it, you know. The crack made me more dangerous and they more dangerous than they want money. But to lose everything, to lose all your money and everything uh, over crack, over drugs, ain't no good, ain't no good. And there's a lot of people out there uh, like me, like I was, that are doing the exact same thing, enjoying their life, but, um, enjoying the minute, really. Enjoying that minute, you know what I mean? You're enjoying, you know, taking whatever you're taking, you're enjoying it, and then then you're chasing it, and you're more and more and more, and at the end of it, you've got no money. You know what I mean? You've got no money, what do you do then? You've got no money, so therefore you've got to go and get it. Yeah, because that, that buzz you had, that minute that you had the buzz, you loved it, and it's, and it just, <laughs> cocaine, mate. Goes straight to your brain. It does, and it mullers you. It, it messes you up, yeah. But the feeling's so good. The worst of it is crack. Uh, you get on that, mate. It's a finished article. Good night, big time. Try to be safe. You're gone. Finished. I was gone, mate. I went, no way. You know what I mean? It's like, and and if you got, and if you got somebody that's your partner at that time, is on the gear, it's even worse. Um, you know, I was, I looked at the other day, uh, of, um, of a, um, video called Entice, Entice, yeah, N slash Tice, uh, Ario Laborio, Oborio, um, absolutely stunning, stunning, yeah, um, and a group, pop group, uh, and it was, they, 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 they were so good. Uh, they, but they went underground. Uh, sugar babes, they was over the top of sugar. Yeah, better than sugar babes, mate. No about that. But they went, up, they went, they went underneath and played different places. And went anyway. But um, you know, but Alio, she was a fantastic singer, mate, and a dancer. She was one of the best dancers in England. That's why Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown wanted her to go to America. Uh, to, to do the exact same thing, dance and sing for them. But because she'd been in America, because she was over there before with Entice, um, they seen her, uh, got her on crack or whatever it was she was on, you know. But when, when she went over there and Bobby Brown went to Houston and they just dis abused her, yeah? They abused her, I was to phone her up, yeah? And we was together. And, she, and they abused her and it... Killed me, you know what I mean? And she was over there and come and I met her at the airport. Um, she was completely different, mate. She, you know, she was like completely different. 
not the girl that I knew. Uh, she got on crack really bad. We was on crack anyway, but not bad. And she was on, then she come back from, from America and she was on crack, mate. It was like, pfft, I couldn't believe it, you know, uh, how it went, yeah. And, uh, and then being, because you're in love and all that crap and because you don't want to see that person hunting for crack and doing the wrong things for crack, you supply her, give her money, buy crack for her. But what you're doing, you're making it worse because that supply you got, money, has got to go. So when it goes and you've got to go out and I'll see you tomorrow, she's out doing the exact same thing that you give a crack not to do. So it's, it's, it's a funny old thing. And obviously, you know, and, you, and it's, it's such a dirty, silly drug, uh, some of the things that happen, you know. Um, I mean, she's, uh, you know, nearly been raped so many times, it's unbelievable, more like he has been raped more than once or twice, you know. And it slaughtered me. Uh, her sister, Tamara, she was, uh, she was like, like Ariel, she was a beautiful woman, um, really beautiful. And, uh, you know, and it hurts when you see someone like Tamara, that she done her ligament or something, a tendon in her, in her leg, one of her legs, and she used to run for England. Yeah, as a junior, and she was going to be good, mate. She was going to be really good. And she'd done her tendon or a ligament or something happened, and she had to stop for a little while and then got on the drugs, met someone and got on the pipe. And it ruined it, you know. And them two, them two girls, Ario and her sister Tamara, fantastic together, beautiful women. And this beautiful, and another one, Nikki, the younger sister, the same all can sing, they've all got talents, you know, like a family of talents, yeah? Uh, a brother, uh, forget his name now, the talent he had, he used to bash his sisters up. That was his talent, yeah? It was his talent until one day, he bashed Ario up and I went in and smashed him to pieces. <laughs> I had to, I had to, because I was down the bottom of the stairs, um, Ario went in the house and, uh, and he steamed into her, and I, I just had to smack, knock the door down, knock the door down, went in the house and bashed him up, mate, bat, batted him, really smashed him to pieces. Uh, bat so bad that uh, uh, he just rupped, done, done him, done his stomach and smashed him up, mate. I didn't hit him in the face, I just smashed him around his body. You know, I'm going, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to go around bashing women up, mate, you've got to take the consequences of being bashed up yourself. You can't do that. You can't be bashing women up. You know, we all, listen, we know, we know that women drive us crazy. We know that. But look at, look at them, yeah? They're feminine. Yeah? We know they can bash us up in their mouth. You know, and it's not funny, you know, like my Danny, Danny Johnson, she was a beautiful, beautiful woman, mate. And she was nearly six foot. But not only was she six foot, she could have a right fight. <laughs> she was like her dad and her mum could really march on, yeah? So uh, she had that Italian thing about her, yeah? Really fiery fucking. Look. And when we used to have a fight, she used to have a fight with me. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Stand up and fight me like a proper man, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> And you get a woman right, hitting you on the jaw, you're shaking you and you think, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? And she used to put it together. You, she used to put it together, mate. She used to do it with the left and the right and the left hook. <laughs> her dad taught her a lot, yeah? Her mum and dad taught her a lot and she and she could have a fight. I, I miss I miss Danny, uh, Danny Johnson. Uh, she was a beautiful person to me. Um, I would mugged her off in lots of ways. It's my fault, what, everything was happened in, in our lives. Um, but, you know, sometimes you, you, you go to bed or you sit down and you just think about it and you think, what an arsehole. What an arsehole you've been, mate, you know what I mean, towards Danny and what you did and what you, you know, you should have not have done and all this. And, you know, and we all regret, we all regret them things, don't we? Do you know what I mean? After, and we look back, and but I used to look back and laugh. I, I just laugh about, having a fight. <laughs>
I laughed. And what I used to do, and Danny used to go mad at it, yeah? Uh, we used to go, go back and have a fight, and then he says, well, I'm going, bye. <laughs> I'm gone. Stars it, finish number one. And I'd go out the house, get in the car, whew, gone. Two days, and she'd be going crazy, wouldn't she? I'd come back, walk up the stairs or whatever, to the flat or wherever, upstairs or wherever, and she start. I went, bye, I'm gone again. And then, got, and then I'd go. Then I'd go, stay away for another two days, come back, right? And then in the end of the day, right, she'd realise, yeah, that really, don't, don't say nothing, just wipe your mouth, yeah? Because uh, rather than fight, I used to disappear. And sometimes uh, that's worse in a way, because I ain't got a clue where you're going. But, you know, anyway, um, again, um, I like to say to Emma, I disrespected uh, Brian, I uh, disrespected you. I didn't realise that Brian was uh, ill. Brian Cottrell uh, is still a bit ill, you know. Uh, I don't know if he's in hospital or what he is, where he is, but he's ill still, yeah. And he's a big man, you know. Uh, what was he, 22 stone, Brian Cottrell? You know, and he come in and, 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 you know, no one might listen. We all say things on 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 uh, on, a, on the media that we don't really mean. We just say it, yeah. But he's a big man. Um, he has gone. He has lost weight. Like me, uh, we all lose weight uh, when you're ill. I mean, I've got four stents in my heart. When I come out of there, mate, I went in there. I went in there about twenty stone. Come out about ten. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm dead. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I ain't got long left now. It's all over. But I'm still going after 10 years of it, yeah. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I just, um, uh, just, uh, I disrespected Brian. Um, I will, you know, and, you know, I, what can we say? Just that um, Emma told me off. Emma's very strong. Uh, she, it, uh, Brian's a strong person. And he's got a strong wife and she cut me off and she's entitled to do that. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, and I, it's just, <laughs> just, just say, Emma, all right, you know what I mean? Anyway, I've gone on again uh, for a long time. Um, please, uh, just if you like my, my little video, uh, subscribe. I've got a lot of people subscribe to me now, you know what I mean? Well, after I said I've done 700 videos and I've got 6,500 subscribers, <laughs> then there's people who've done 100 videos and got, and got about, about 20,000, 30,000. <laughs> anyway, listen, forget about that. Anyway, it's, um, thanks for all my, 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 my people that uh, send me comments. And subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Yeah. And yeah, thanks very much. You know. And anyway, uh, this is uh, Bang Bang Rail. Uh, listen, my book is out soon. My book is out soon. Believe. Um, the uh, ghostwriter is on my case now. More on my case. There is a few things he's got to uh, this get together. He's fantastic, mate. He's so good, honestly, he's good. The way he's done it is just so good. Anyway, like and subscribe. Take care, nice one, bye.